Win big with new DRF All Access Pass Performances. With one best in class product, you now get all three pass performance formats. Go to drf.com and use coupon code one free PP for a free single card today. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, kicking off the first leg of a $350,000 guaranteed pool in the 50 cent pick three at Gulfstream Park on Pegasus World Cup Saturday. It's race 11. The grade three Fred W. Hooper stakes against the kickoff leg for that guaranteed pool into the two big Pegasus World Cup events. And let's take a look at this field because it's a full field and it's a pretty interesting group, Mike. From Southern California, Hajazi comes in, Bafford and Pratt. This horse once sold for $3.5 million. He's multiple grade one placed. Yeah, true. And he's also speed from the rail. Um, yeah, he's an interesting horse shipping in here, Dan, to try the one turn mile. He's got the figures. He just doesn't have any real major wins yet. Not only is there that big $350,000 guaranteed pool in this pick three, but the wagering doesn't stop on Sunday at Gulfstream Park if the rainbow pick six is not hit. That pool's got to go out on Sunday, a mandatory force out. And if there's not one single winner before then, the pool will be humongous. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector. Mike talked about Hajazi being speed in the rail. And there he is right up close to what time form U.S. considers to be a fast pace. Expressman, the two is quick and Expressman is fresh. Yeah, off the layoff here for Expressman. He is fast, Dan, um, especially when you go to that Carter. Two starts back. I know it wasn't the strongest field in the world, but that was a fast pace that he was a part of. Um, I think he goes in here. You have giant game uh, uh, for Dale Romans. I feel like his best game is on the lead. I don't know if he can get there or not. This pace could be fast. Let's talk a little bit more about Hajazi making his first start as a four-year-old off of a runner-up effort against a pretty good stable mate in Speedboat Beach. This is the grade one Malibu going seven-eighths of a mile. Hijazi basically sat off of Speedboat Beach throughout. I thought they raced through with legitimate fractions. There's no closing going on. Speedboat Beach right now is just a better horse than Hijazi. Yeah, he's only second best here. There's nobody else in here really threatening these two, and he's never uh, was good enough to get by his stable mate. I guess he ran fine. Another 99 buyer from that's three of those. He also ran a, a 100 buyer when he failed to break his maiden also against Speedboat Beach uh, as a two-year-old. I don't know, Dan, again, he's got the figures. He's got speed. Maybe this is just the right spot shipping in. Um, he's got a maiden win and, a, and an entry-level allowance win to his credit. I don't know. He's not a To me, he's not a standout in here. Maybe he's the horse to beat, though. Perhaps he's the horse to beat. He'll have to stretch his speed out to a one-turn mile. We'll see if that affects him as well. The two is Expressman going out for Todd Pletcher. John Velasquez, you mentioned the Carter handicap. That was a pretty big test. First time in a stakes race. And also, as you mentioned, the pace was very fast. Remember, Doppelganger came from way out out of it to pull off the upset for Brittany Russell. Expressman then ran in a tough edition of the Westchester, and he didn't run very well in that race. He also ran against some really good horses. Zandon came back to run second in the Met and Whitney, and then won the Woodward. Right. I mean, his Carter, I guess you could say, is underrated. He wasn't good in the Westchester last time. He's a, I don't know, I think he's a pretty tough call here, Dan. He has that big figure from his career debut at Saratoga a couple of summers ago. Um, that rate, that figure hasn't really stood the test of time. And, uh, this horse hasn't actually turned out to be that good. I expect him to show speed in here. Um, I just think it's going to be a tough for him to win this race with a Jazzy right to his inside. I think that's a very good point, especially considering the layoff, because Todd's going to really have to have those shoes nailed on tight for Expressman to go a one-turn mile off a long layoff with another speed to the inside. Steel Sunshine is the number three, and this horse is taking a little bit of a step up in class. He was fourth last time out in the Harlan's Holiday, and I thought he ran a sneaky good race that day. He broke from a very tough outside post position, nine of ten. He was basically four wide around both turns. I thought he was running on at the end with a decent gallop out. The eighth place horse another horse that suffered from a wide trip came back to win a florida bread steak with a 97 buyer yeah i agree that he, he ran an underrated race last time i don't mind him um cutting back to the one turn mile here dan and he's just more than anything else he's just an underrated horse i don't think he's in over his head against this field and he should be a very fair price in here the last win from the number four Cyclone Mischief came going a one-turn mile at Gulfstream Park. He seems to like it. He also ran pretty well going two turns in some of those Kentucky Derby preps, third in the Fountain of Youth, third in the Florida Derby. His most recent start was his first race since the Kentucky Derby. Maybe he needed it going a one-turn mile. He raced wide. 
I'm willing to give him a pass for that race. I think there's something here for this horse. He's going to deal with another short layoff. Yeah, I agree. I, I feel, and I also feel like the one turn mile is better than him. I'm, I'm with you. He ran fine in some of the two turn races. I think he's better going a little bit shorter. So I like them coming back with him in this spot. Um, I realize he probably has to take a step forward to win here, but you'll probably get paid if you're right. Dreaming of Kona is up next. Finished third last time out in the grade three Mr. Prospector Stakes. Behind a nice source, Sibelius, we saw win the Dubai Golden Shaheen last year. He might be prepping for that race yet again. Uh, Dreaming of Kona looks like a horse that's very comfortable at one turn, whether it's six furlongs or a mile. He's going to get some pace. Now he needs a little buyer boost. Yeah, he's got to take a pretty significant step forward here. I'm not sure that I love him going a little bit longer. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that stretching out one furlong still around one turn, you know, has to do this horse in. I kind of think he's better sprinting. Gilmore ran on the Pennsylvania Derby two starts back. He didn't look comfortable at all that day over a sloppy track. He didn't change leads. I've always thought of him as a one-running sprinter miler around one turn. And here's Gilmore's last race, his first since the Pennsylvania Derby, the aforementioned Mr. Prospector, where favored Sibelius was too good for him. But he's going to come with a good run again on the outside, and he's going to grab second from Dreaming of Kona. So I think he's going to get the right setup in this race. He has run some fast races in the past including that woody stevens behind arabian lion maybe at a price we could sort of sneak him into the number at the very least yeah i, I would use this horse somewhere um i don't maybe not as much on top but i'll have him in there somewhere because i don't mind the one turn mile for him there should be pace for him to close into in this race and i feel like that's what he really needs i think he does like to sit and make one run Castle Chaos, the seven, of course, is entered as the also eligible in the Pegasus World Cup. If he doesn't get in, he runs here, and I like him at a one-turn mile, and it looks like he's in really good form for an underrated young trainer. Winning at the one-turn mile, two starts back, and we talked about the Cigar Mile in the Pegasus World Cup preview. Speed day, muddy track. This horse tried to rally from out of it, and all things considered, ran pretty well to be third. He ran okay last time. If nothing else, I just I like the fact that his cigar mile sort of confirmed the effort that he ran two starts back, where it just seemed like he kind of improved out of nowhere, Dan, and blew that field away with a really big figure. And I think he just showed in the cigar mile more than anything else. He never looked like he was going to win, but he showed that maybe that wasn't a fluke. Um, in really good form right now, but I did prefer other horses in here. Finished ahead of a horse that earned a 94 buyer speed figure in his next start after the Cigar Mile, when second in a stakes race at Laurel. Accretive is a tough call for me. I've always been a huge fan of this horse. He just seems to come up short when it counts in these big races. Although, can you really hold it against him in the Vosburg running second to Cody's Wish? No, he ran great that day. The 49er, I was a little bit more disappointed that he didn't get the job done in that one turn mile race, but he was also pretty wide his last race was the cigar mile outside post wet track speed bias he's a much better horse than that yeah and he's a horse too when you go back and watch that cigar mile at least when i went back and watched it he he looked like he was not confident over that wet track at all he didn't look comfortable over it he never really fired any kind of a shot in there i'm going to give him a pass for that one i thought he had a pretty big excuse too back in the 49er he didn't get out of the gate well and then when he did recover he had to rush up and he was wide around the track so I think he actually ran okay that day. This is a really good spot for this horse because he has tactical speed, Dan, but he's not one of those horses who needs the lead. He can sit just off of it and get a really good trip here. He was well drawn for Arad Ortiz and Chad Brown, and you can argue after only eight starts, he still has upside with some dirtied up form. That's accretive number eight. Number nine, Giant Game has shown speed at sort of longer distance races like the Cornhusker handicap last summer where he just got to the lead over a speed favoring track and wired him, and that's pretty much been his best game. I was stunned that they rated him in the Charlestown Classic three starts back. It didn't work out for him. He got wired that day. The Clark class timeout, that's a race I just don't love overall, and he didn't run well at all. Maybe the turn back will help. Maybe it will. I don't, I, I'm don't. i very conflicted about that. Um, to me, he kind of looks like a horse who wants to be on the lead, um, and maybe those you know sort of longer races around two turns offer him a better chance to just make the front. Um, I thought it was going to be hard for him to clear to the early lead in this race. And I really don't want him if he's going to be beaten and, and either forced to trace or track. Great Navigator, the number 10, finished third behind Cody's Wish and Accretive in the Vosburg. I thought Accretive ran a much better race. Uh, Mike mentioned he didn't break. Uh, Mike mentioned that just simply that he was in a little bit tough that day. Great Navigator ran fine. He pushed the pace inside. He just couldn't go with Accretive in the stretch. And in the Mr. Prospector last time out, he couldn't go with Gilmore or Dreaming with Kona. So he's going to do more.
thought his Vosburgh was uh, actually okay um, and sort of suggested that some of those earlier races that he ran, um, you know, weren't, weren't, um, weren't flukes anyway. Let's just say that. It was a real test for him. I thought he stood up to it really well. I didn't like his race last time, but um, I suspect he can do better, and he's going to be a huge price in here. Dumba Rumba, the number 11, is a Louisiana bred who's done well against Open Company, won the Ellis Park Derby around one and a half turns at the Pete Patch three starts back. Then he ran okay in the Oklahoma Derby, was only beaten ahead that day. Last time out off a little bit of a layoff against Louisiana breds. I'm not sure that race really was run to suit him. It's a short field. He got wired. Uh, I'm willing to give him another chance in here, and he actually has figures two and three starts back that make him somewhat interesting. I'm not sure what's his best distance, though. I think he's pretty versatile. I, I do too. I don't. I don't mind. He's another one. I don't mind him cutting back to the one turn mile for a trainer who's just on fire at this meet. Everything he sends out there is just running really well. And this horse actually feels like he kind of stacks up okay with these horses. And I don't know what kind of price he's going to be. If he wound up taking money in here, I probably wouldn't be interested. But if he just goes overlooked because he's coming out of a restricted stakes race. I don't know, man. At the right kind of price, I could be using this horse. I thought Signator was a cinch when he was entered in the Harlan's Holiday earlier this month. And should McGahee decided to ship him back up to New York and run him in the Queens County, figuring a mile and an eighth in a shorter field might have helped him out? Well, Signator ran very, very well, only beaten a half length behind Krupe. He was very wide all the way around the track. I like him cutting back to this distance. I'm not sure I love this post position, but this is a talented horse who's coming into his own. I agree. And he still has upside, too. I don't think we've seen his best race yet. And more than anything else, to me, I know he won going a two-turn, nine furlong race, two back. I think he's better going shorter, Dan. He gets really, he pulls really hard around two turns. And I think he's just better suited when these paces get away from him a little bit. And he can just make one run through the stretch. I think that's his best running style. So I actually like him cutting back for this race with upside in a race where they're probably going to go in front of him a lot to like about this horse. He has a very nice turn of foot as he showed two starts back when he just cruised up on the leaders on the second turn of that nine for a long race. Give him some pace going a one turn mile. I would expect him to be running hard at the end. Let's take a look at our top picks for the Fred W. Hooper. Again, first leg of a pick three, 50 cent minimum wager, $350,000 guaranteed pool. You're going with Signator and why not? We talked about all of his uh, uh, attributes in this race and he's going to get a setup. Yeah, exactly. He should have pace in here. I like the shorter distance for him. I like his upside. Um, I don't mind them being drawn on the outside as long as they go in front of him here. Dan, I want to bet this horse. I like Signator. I think we both agree that Hijazi is one of, if not the absolute horse to beat. But I want to go for a price in here. I thought, as you mentioned, Steel Sunshine ran an underrated race last time out, just wide all the way around the track. And he seemed to be finding a little bit more. And like you, I like him cutting back in distance. Again, the price is going to be right for this underrated horse. 3 1 12 7 for me, 12 1 8 6 for Mike. Fred W. Hooper on Pegasus World Cup Saturday. Good luck.